Harmony Inn, March 1st, 2019, Harmony, Pennsylvania. Simply setting foot on the land on which Harmony Inn stands brings patrons, young and old, local and foreign, a sense of joy and happiness. During the warm summers, guests sprawl among the outdoor seating and enjoy the beautiful weather, good company, and great food. In the cold of winter, these guests flock inside the warmth of the fireplaces and pile into the bar, shoulder to shoulder on most nights, to enjoy the company and spirits. However, these spirits are not just left to the drinks. As you move between the warm and inviting spaces throughout the old hotel, the refurbished and original architecture of a former time astounds and amazes. Moving further towards the heart of the structure and beholding the main staircase leading to the second floor, you can feel a certain heaviness to the area that is hard to ignore. This heaviness has been documented on numerous occasions and was even experienced firsthand by our team. Not only does it feel different, but it draws your eye so much that you can imagine this staircase bustling with old energies, filling guests with anxiety and an unsettling sensation. This tends to be the heart of the building, but the weight of the old world can dwell inside multiple rooms throughout the structure, creating a unique perception that one is surrounded with opposing sensations of happiness and sadness, joy and despair, warmth and coldness, light and darkness. With the long history and the regularity of interchanging businesses within the Harmony Inn, it's no wonder why the local clientele aren't the only patrons returning to enjoy their restaurant and craft beer house. The History of Harmony Inn The origin of the small town of Harmony, Pennsylvania, begins primarily with the Lutheran separatist movement in late 1804. In the early 1800s, the Lutheran separatists founded numerous small communities throughout southwestern Pennsylvania, including Harmony. These separatist communities lasted until 1814, when the Harmonists relocated to the state of Indiana and sold their land to the local Mennonites for a bargain. The Mennonites maintained control of the land until their church was permanently shuttered in the early 1900s. Despite the Mennonites being incredibly peaceful by nature, the Civil War severely affected them economically and altered the landscape through businesses and the needs and wants of the community. This also directly led to the rise and fall of the mansion that is now known as the Harmony Inn. While today the Harmony Inn is recognized as a popular restaurant and bar, it was originally constructed as a private residence for Austin Pierce, a wealthy banker, railroad executive, and mill operator before the Civil War. In 1856, he contracted the building of his two-story, Italianate stylized brick mansion in the small town of Harmony, Pennsylvania. This structure included the first indoor plumbing in the area and a full basement and attic. Pierce and his wife enjoyed the beauty and serenity of their home for nearly a decade. During this time, the Pierce family grew with the birth of their daughter and son, However, tragedy struck during the birth of their second child when Pierce's wife passed away from significant blood loss. After his wife's untimely death, Pierce was forced to raise his children and run his businesses on his own. While he did hire an elderly nanny to watch the children, she more often than not spent her days sitting in the rocking chair on the second floor, watching the Harmonites hurry from here to there. In the early 1860s, the children's nanny contracted tuberculosis and died in their rear room of the mansion. Without great knowledge of the disease or how to prevent its spreading, Pierce hired a few local hands and in hopes of keeping the disease from spreading, interred the nanny behind a brick wall in that very room. Unfortunately, both of Austin Pierce's children also contracted the dreadful disease. Not wanting to lose hope, he quarantined both children in the upstairs room locking them inside so they could spread the disease no further. In less than two months, both his daughter and his son perished inside the mansion. Following his children's death, Pierce fell into a deep depression that ultimately cost him his home and his business. In the aftermath of the Civil War, the railroad businesses throughout the North began failing. Austin Pierce, having lost the majority of his fortune during this sudden recession, was forced to sell his home. In the late 1870s, Pierce sold the property to the Ziegler family, who immediately began renovations. 
The Zieglers were not interested in utilizing the mansion in the same way as Austin Pierce. Instead, they envisioned a business opportunity. The mansion was transformed into a hotel and saloon. Again, the building was ahead of the curve and became one of the first businesses with an official business license in the region. The Zieglers appropriately changed the building's name to the Ziegler Hotel. In 1900, with the increased popularity of the Ziegler Hotel, the family added a full two-story wing expansion. In the early 20th century, the Zieglers sold their hotel and the structure began to take on different forms with each subsequent owner. The property transitioned through numerous different functions and over the years was used as a meeting house, boarding home, stable, bar, and a restaurant. During these evolutions, name changes also occurred. The Ziegler Hotel became the Manor House and later still the Harmony Hilton. Finally, the then Harmony Hilton was purchased by Gary Barnes and Carl Beers in 1985. After taking possession of the property, Barnes and Beers began a long and tedious restoration process, stripping the building of its current and modern upgrades and taking the mansion back to its original grandeur. They opened a German-based restaurant and began one of the first craft beer breweries in the suburban Pittsburgh area. On one side of the ground floor, they added a long and narrow tavern area, which boasts original hardwood and handcrafted ornate woodwork. They used both the first and second floors for dining areas, with the upstairs comprising smaller, more secluded dining rooms and private party rooms. The business partners officially changed the name to Harmony Inn. After enjoying a long and successful business venture, Barnes and Beers sold the Harmony Inn to Bob and Jody McCafferty in 2013. The McCafferty's continue to run the restaurant and brewery in Harmony, Pennsylvania to this day. Paranormal Experiences There is so much activity throughout the restaurant that it's challenging to identify any of the entities. During the lifetime of the Harmony Inn, between visitors, employees, and proprietors, it is very hard to say who would return to this place after death. So many individuals have entered through Harmony Inn's doors ever since its inception in 1856. Even before being purchased by Gary Barnes and Carl Beers in 1985, the location was said to be one of the most haunted spots in Pennsylvania. Former hotel guests reported flickering lights and cold bursts of air rush past them, even in warm summer months. The strangest occurrences were that of levitating and moving objects. Guests have even heard their names being called from vacant rooms from time to time. Many of the employees, including the owners, feel a peaceful and relaxed apparition that likes to help out and guard the premises. These feelings come in the form of warmth and just a friendly presence that helps keep the employees and visitors upbeat and happy. The sense is that this is more than just a spirit. Instead, it's a guardian of both the living and dead. The true identity of this guardian is unknown, but it has very much made itself well known at the Harmony Inn. Another presence that has been identified is Barney. Barney is one of the multiple tragedies that occurred at the Harmony Inn. He stumbled down the main staircase, breaking his neck in the process. Barney was hospitalized, but passed away off-site. It has been said that Barney is a trickster and will move and hide bar items. He doesn't want to cause trouble, and if asked, Barney will return the items just as quickly as they went missing. He has also been said to rearrange furniture throughout the former mansion while no one else is in the building or on the premises. His presence has been experienced as a cold gust of air moving past bartenders and felt to be just sitting back watching patrons and employees alike. There was also a young girl who died at the Harmony Inn in the late 1800s. This girl, still nameless to this day, was said to be both physically and mentally handicapped. Supposedly, she was the daughter of one of the Ziegler family members. This young girl passed away much too young without living a full and happy life. There have been noises coming from upper floors, including thumping or banging on the floor itself. These noises are related to similar sounds of a cane or crutch slamming into the floor. The girl has also been thought to manipulate both electrical devices and the power in the Harmony Inn. Lights tend to flicker or shut off on a whim when the girl is felt in the building. 
both of Austin Pierce's children have been heard giggling in the attic and footsteps can be heard pitter-pattering around when the attic is locked, with no one else around or having access for that matter. Black sooty handprints have been spotted and rumored to be the children still playing in the afterlife. The attic door will open and close on its own, with no apparent breeze to blow it open or employees around to open or close it. The nanny who triggered the tuberculosis outbreak in Austin Pierce's home has been heard walking around in the rear room where cries and moans have been heard echoing from inside the room. She has also been spotted looking out the front windows as she used to when she was babysitting Austin Pierce's children. One of the more well-known entities in the Harmony Inn is that of the mysterious Mirror Man. This apparition of a man has been seen in mirrors throughout the restaurant, including in bathrooms, the bar mirror, and even a woman's compact mirror. This same apparition has been recorded as a dark mist gliding throughout the upstairs hallway. One locally famous photograph resides on the stairwell wall of the Harmony Inn that clearly pictures this vain entity. Some businesses do not like to acknowledge the existence of any type of spirit or ghost in their building, thinking that it may scare away their clientele. However, the current owners and employees like to share their own stories and promote their otherworldly visitors. Before becoming an owner, Bob McCafferty worked as a bartender and remembers several peculiar incidents. Once, while cleaning empty glasses, Bob suddenly noticed objects flying past him, very nearly clipping the top of his head. After recovering from the fright, Bob analyzed the object and discovered that it was a handful of coins. To this day, he still claims that the coins appeared from thin air and flew at him right through the wall. The coin toss was not his only experience. On another occasion, while swapping out kegs in the basement, Bob felt a dark and eerie presence watching him. As he spun around, he noticed a black shadow in the form of a tall man. As he departed the basement, Bob felt a cold finger drag down his spine. He rushed out of the room and documented that he did not feel safe and that he had a sixth sense that this entity was no good. Other employees have also had their own paranormal experiences. One of the bartenders was locked in the bathroom when no one else was around, only to be released when a co-worker also needed to use the restroom. A server has reported the sounds of a vacuum cleaner running on the upstairs floors, as well as the noise of furniture sliding across the hardwood floors when no employee was cleaning. Due to these housekeeping activities occurring quite often to the staff, they have dubbed this entity Louie. Louis was the very first innkeeper during the mansion's early existence. Investigation. Upon our arrival, the bar was still in operation and packed. We were greeted by the locals who were enjoying their Friday evening with some freshly brewed beer and some home-cooked German-inspired cuisine. Everyone was friendly and was happy to make our acquaintance and see the what we were up to that night. Some of the patrons even followed us around while we set up our equipment and asked us questions about what we were doing, with a few sharing some of their own paranormal experiences. Before the bar cleared out, the manager on duty that night shared a creepy picture that was, according to him, found behind the cabinet in the manager's office some years prior. The photo shows what appeared to be a child-sized figure standing at the top of the stairs leading to the attic. We attempted to recreate the photo with our own photographs of the area. At a later point in the investigation, we were unsuccessful. We still to this day cannot figure out what was captured in the photo. At 1 a.m., the final patrons made their way out of the bar. We started our investigation as soon as the final car left the parking lot and wrapped around 6 a.m. The equipment list for that evening included two recorders, an EMF reader, a K2 meter, two night vision video cameras, one mobile and one stationary, an SB7 spirit box, a plasma ball, a laser grid pen, a REM pod, and an obelis. Communication throughout the night appeared on and off in various locations. Some of the more notorious hotspots were quiet, but we did seem to experience moving spirits as well as residual conversations. The most communication occurred in the dining area on the second floor, where we experienced some heaviness in the air and some unexplained sounds. Our best REM pod communication occurred in the bar, which lasted over 10 minutes. 
Some of the residual activity occurred on the second floor, close to Grandma's room, where we also heard a dog's yelp, which we've never experienced in the past. In the attic upstairs, there have been reports of two small children's spirits being seen and felt. They are said to run around and laugh in the attic area. On the wall and ceiling, two black smudged handprints are rumored to have been left by the children. In the doorway where the children were quarantined, staff claimed to have witnessed a white light appear outside the door and disappear as it entered the doorway. This is the exact location where the previously mentioned photograph was taken. While we attempted some spirit box communication in the attic, we recorded an audible noise, but we were unable to translate that into anything decipherable. Can you use the box to tell us your name? We also recorded some communication here. When we asked if the spirits could speak with us, we received the response, yes. Can you speak to us? As we were packing our equipment, we left whoever was present with us know that we would return later in the night. We heard, not much, which we interpreted to mean that they wanted us to return sooner rather than later. You're more than welcome to come to another room with us if you're here. If not, we will come back up later. Not much. We then proceeded to the dining room on the second floor, located on the right-hand side of the building. Locals have reported seeing a woman standing in the windows, peering out and pacing from room to room. These claims seem to be backed up by the story of the nanny whose body was buried in the walls of the Harmony Inn after she passed away from tuberculosis. We placed the stationary camera facing the room towards the second half of the investigation. During attempts to communicate, we recorded some intelligence through the spirit box. We heard hello after we introduced ourselves. We were about to introduce ourselves. My name is Daniel. To my right, sitting in the chair is Garrett. Standing to my left is Gabe. <laughs> Then the same hello as we stopped speaking momentarily. We followed up by asking if someone was trying to say something to us, which we heard me. As you try to talk to us, I'm about saying something a little bit clearer for us so we can hear you. It sounds like somebody's trying to say something. <laughs> As one of the investigators stood up, we captured Pid. We explained that we were just trying to talk and heard not interested in response. In the second floor hallway between the two dining areas, the same woman has been reported walking down the corridor and looking out the window. Footsteps, moans, and shadows have all been reported here. One of the more startling moments of our investigation occurred here before we began running our equipment. We heard a chair in the dining room that we had just vacated slide along the floor. We immediately began to question any spirits who were with us using the spirit box. When we asked to move the chair, we captured, it was me, followed by the name Anna. What was that? You gotta say something? What you As we were discussing this name, we recorded, come here. I heard Anna again. Once more we asked who made the noise and we heard it was Anna. Who the chair? We asked once again for the confirmation about who moved the chair. We received a response of I did, followed by my house. Can you knock something over? We promptly responded to the entity that it was not their house anymore and heard, it's mine. Not anymore. We went into the left-hand dining room on the second floor, which is directly connected to Grandma's room, the same room where the old nanny was allegedly buried in the wall a long time ago. In our still photography, we captured a light mist rising from and moving across the floor. The mist moved right past us, disappearing as soon as it approached the window. The photo shows the mist in the lower right-hand corner as it moves toward us. 
As we approached Grandma's room, we heard a dog yelp. This sounded as though it came from the dead air and not through the active spirit box. <coughs> At this point, we entered Grandma's room through the dining room. The small area had produced reports of paranormal activity, including disembodied voices and Grandma's apparition, which walks from her dining room to the dining area and peers out the window. While our simple EVP session did not produce much of note, we attempted the spirit box once more as we sat down at the table. We captured hello. At this moment, one of the investigators stated that he saw something in the dining room to which we heard, they see me? With limited communication after that, we asked if the spirit wanted us to follow it and chase it, to which we heard, not now. Is there anyone over here that wants to talk to us? Or do you want us to chase you again? Hmm. With limited further communication, we moved downstairs to the first floor bar. In this area, chairs and glasses have reportedly moved on their own. There is footage of a glass moving behind the bar and a chair being moved while employees stood nearby in awe. It has been reported that footsteps and residual conversations can be heard at the bar, regardless of if the bar is open or closed. After jumping right into using our spirit box for communication, we were surprised to find that the REM pod was the most active equipment in the area. We noticed that the REM pod was triggered seemingly randomly. We asked the entity to stay away from the device if they were male, but the REM pod signified that the person was female by setting it off. I'm going to ask you a question. If you can not respond for male. Show me female. Yeah. This happened again when we asked if the female spirit was still present, and the REM pod was triggered once more. We didn't hear any voice from the spirit box, but it did make some clicking sounds, like someone was attempting to talk but lacked the energy to do so. We asked if they were unable to communicate verbally and the REM pod lit up, indicating a positive response. It's the female who made the slide up before the with us. Yep. Have you tried to speak in this thing before? Low energy? Not enough energy? On our handheld camera, one can see the REM pod, which is placed on the bar next to us, light up. Interestingly, as we continued to use the REM pod for communication, we noticed unusual light anomalies entering the screen just before the REM pod alerted us. While this was all intriguing, we decided to move on and investigate the dining room on the first floor, where there have been some reports of footsteps and soft voices heard. Unfortunately, we did not capture anything out of the ordinary here. From there, we went to one of the most notorious areas of the building, the main staircase. This area is so infamous that the restaurant even has a framed picture of what seems to be an apparition standing on the staircase. In addition to this moment captured in time, people have reported seeing shadows and moving silhouettes walking up the steps and wandering around the hallway. We installed a stationary camera and kept it recording this spot for about half of our investigation. Although our time spent investigating this area didn't yield much, the stationary camera captured some phenomenal moments. During our later review of the footage, we heard some strange noises, including a buzzing sound, creaking footsteps, a dog's familiar yelp, and a loud thud. Remarkably, in addition to these noises, the door to the foyer was seen physically opening and closing while all of the investigators were accounted for on the second floor. The atmosphere at Harmony Inn was light and inviting, much like a bar or restaurant is on a normal basis. However, there was one area that stood out as having a unique energy, although we couldn't qualify it as being dark or heavy, simply different. This was the front dining room on the second floor, where the chair moved when we stepped out. We did manage to capture some photographs, but the majority of the activity was communication through the spirit box, recorded via the recorders, 
After conducting our investigation at the Harmony Inn, we believe that there are intelligent spiritual communication in certain areas, specifically the second floor dining area and the bar. There were some residual conversations overheard in the second floor dining area, closest to Grandma's room and the bar area. The Harmony Inn has a light and welcoming presence to it, and aside from the odd feeling in the front dining room on the second floor, we never felt any negative energy. Even when we were asked to leave or move on, we managed to speak with a spirit and then agree to move on in the building. After spending a long night here, interacting with employees, and even speaking with some guests, we analyzed the evidence and information gathered throughout the evening of March 1st and 2nd, 2019. We can confidently state that the Harmony Inn hosts a few different spirits, and we even managed to get the name Anna from one of the active entities. Aside from a few photos of the dining room and attic, there was a clear video of a door physically opening and closing in the foyer area, which we would consider physical evidence where a spirit interacts with the environment. The dining room on the second floor, where a chair moved, can be considered physical evidence, but it is deemed inconclusive as we did not find any chair to be moved or have any video evidence of this physically occurring. The majority of our evidence is communication via the spirit box and REM pod captured on the video and recorders. Based on our experience and evidence gathered, we can conclude that the Harmony Inn is home to otherworldly and paranormal entities.